Hello and welcome to the Nicole Mason Show. Uh, this is the Men's Takeover Week, um, but we are also including uh, the wife of our previous guest, Minister Bernard Perry. When we left off yesterday, we were talking about uh, grieving and marriage, grieving and couples coming through uh, grief together. And so I'm so excited to welcome uh, his wife today, uh, Minister Edana Perry. She is a healthcare administrator. Uh, she is also a graduate of Howard University. H -U, yes, you know. H -U. <laughs> uh, she is also a poet and, <laughs> and she's a published author as well. Um, her works have been published in a magazine, Courageous Woman magazine, and uh, we're looking to get her in, into some other uh, venues as well because she writes so beautifully. And I know that that's a way that she has also written um, through her pain using her poetry. So let me let me just, I'm so excited to have the <laughs> both of you here. So welcome Minister Bernard Perry and Minister Edana Perry to the Nicole Mason Show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We are so glad to be here. It took us about seven years. You know what I'm saying, Nicole? I don't know if it was a season, but you know, we're just grateful. Very good. <laughs> I'm so excited to have both of you. And, you know, I think that you all, uh, first and foremost, are just a beautiful couple inside and out. And, you know, you have been very intentional about taking the pain of losing your daughter, Kayla, Mm -hmm. and starting a foundation in her honor. Mm -hmm. And so I want to turn to you, uh, Minister Edana, to talk about um, what this journey has been like from, for you. We heard from uh, Minister Bernard yesterday. Uh, what has this been like for you? Well, I would say that it has been the most, the most earth shattering yet um, growth, earth shattering and growing. Mm -hmm. Um, it has been earth shattering because none of us ever want to be a part of the club called the grieving parent club. Mm -hmm. And we found ourselves, I found myself, I know um, the audience has heard from my husband, I found myself in a state of disbelief, a state of unbelief, a state of anger, um, all the various emotions when I had to come to grips with the fact that our youngest daughter was no longer with us. Mm -hmm. And that process of coming to realization of not wanting it to be real, um, denying it, um, anger, all that balled up into the fact that I'm not alone. I am married mm -hmm. and I have a spouse and I also have other children. So in the midst of that, the reality that, okay, this, this event is real mm -hmm. and the pain is real. I don't like it and it hurts, but if I am also married, then this event that we shared together in order for us to make it through, we need to go through it together. Mm. And I saw, I know for myself, it hurt. It hurt so bad. Like someone just took my heart out and turned it around, stepped on it. So I'm feeling that way. But also my husband is feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And we individually had our own experience relationship with Kayla. Yeah. So then our grieving process or how we are dealing with it is different. And so I felt that I knew I needed help. I needed somebody to talk to uh, because he was dealing with his pain on his own. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And as I started researching, I was like, I got to talk to somebody, EAP from work, mm-hmm. all of that. And I was like, honey, we got to go. Well, he wasn't like so ready to yeah. go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I, we're going, I'm going to schedule this appointment. And it was probably about three weeks after, um, almost maybe a month after Kayla had transitioned. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was doing this research. I hurt. I was, but at the same time, he was hurting. Yeah. And I, 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 I said like, you know what, God, you're going to have to help us because I know that I love him yeah. and I know he loves me, mm-hmm. but we're hurting separately and differently. Mm-hmm. And I just, one day, you know, I saw him kind of being off to himself and like, we're at our house, you know, we, we both were like staring into the clouds and looking up. And one day I said, you know what? I can't do this without you. Like we have been through so much together. I can't do this. Whatever this is, I can't do it without you. Because number one, while there are, everyone has their own experience, when they have lost a loved one, lost a child, we shared Kayla Ross Perry. And so our sharing the loss, we only understand it because we lost Kayla. Mm -hmm. And so when I said that, I believe something clicked in him Mm -hmm. and it is his normal um, personality, which is, well, this is for my wife, <laughs> uh-huh. right? Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. um, you know, same thing. Like, okay, we got to go to this party. Well, yeah. I don't really feel like going, but this is for my wife. She yeah. wants to go. So I'm gonna yeah. go. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it was that same type thing, but it was deeper. Mm-hmm. And when we made our first appointment with the grief counselor, Cause we went to our grief counselor first mm-hmm. and then we scheduled and moved into the grief support groups. Mm-hmm. When we went to that first um, session, I mean, he and I both, we just wept together. I don't even know how she heard anything that we said, Yeah, but I realized that I was so glad that he came with me mm-hmm. because we both just wept mm-hmm. together. Mm -hmm. and and she was fine and it was like okay we got that out yeah and it um it was I I felt that was God's way of letting me know that this was the right thing for us to do because he felt comfortable enough Mm -hmm. to shed his feelings in front of this person that he had never met before Mm -hmm. and I knew I was going to be fine in terms of talking because that's kind of what we do right 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 yeah and and let me just say you know that's just powerful because what what I'm hearing and for those who are listening what I'm hearing is you know when that separation was coming because you all you all are always together i mean <laughs> you, you 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 all do almost everything together and so number 1 that was not your norm to be no. you know begin to have this separation you right. know when they see Absolutely. one the other right right um, and so you shared with us a little bit yesterday uh, minister bernard that you just, just the way that you were feeling and you, you know, just burdened down, overwhelmed. And I know that men do grieve differently. And so when that moment came for you and you said, okay, I'm going to do this for my wife, just share with the audience some of what may have happened inside of you, because Mm -hmm. a man may be listening, like, you know, I, I, I want to tap into it. But I know grief too. Grief can make you feel like 
your heart and the way, and I'm telling you, Minister Dana, you described it just the way I would, I would say it to somebody when I would talk about losing my mom. mom. It felt like somebody had taken my heart out and just rubbed it on the ground and exactly. I couldn't stop the pain. Pain. So uh, Minister Bernard, just share, you know, in that moment when you said, I, I know I have to do something different. What, what were you thinking? Or, you know, what was the lifeline outside of your wife that, you know, you like, I, something has to change because otherwise I'm not going to make it through this. Uh, my circle, uh, the people that's within my circle, but my relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, Dr. Mason, but once my wife shared uh, her feelings uh, in terms of, like I said to you earlier, where the other day where when she made that statement, I had zoned out. Mm -hmm. I was done. I was ready to mentally check out. But God had his, still had his hand on me. Mm -hmm. He was speaking, but I was not, I couldn't hear him because of my grief. Yeah. I was so overwhelmed with the grief. And so once my wife said that, the husband in me kicked in. Mm -hmm. The husband said, you have to support your wife. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with me. I'll go because this is what, what is going to help you. Mm -hmm. God knew I would go to support her, but he used that, 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 that grief session to help me too. Mm -hmm. And so as, as, as a man, when I got there, when I, I had no one, I was just there for her, mm -hmm. but it ministered to me as well. Mm -hmm. It began to minister to, 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 to my spirit there as, as a man. And like I said, eventually they split us up mm -hmm. where I was around other men. That's what got me. Yeah. I was expecting couples. Mm -hmm. So that's what really triggered me to come back because I saw other men dealing with the same thing that grief. Different types of grief, as, as we know, there was some who had lost children. There was some who was divorced, like I told you the other day. Mm -hmm. And that was just different. I, I met a gentleman who had not grieved for 32 years, wow. Dr. Mason. Wow. From a divorce. Mm. He had a son who mm. was 15. The boy cried the entire meeting. Wow. No one, he felt he had no hope he couldn't go talk because as men we hold we self-medicate mm -hmm. whatever that way is that we're medicating and we hold on to it for years I, he said i said i said 32 years he said yes sir this is the first time i felt comfortable with that so i knew i was in the right place uh at at, at that point and, and just being there for my, my wife god used my wife to trigger it Mm -hmm. But God used the 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 grief session and, and and just me wanting to the the husband kicked in and then then God kicked in. Yeah. And and I guess mm -hmm. I would I would just add that um I guess again distinctively in terms of how we deal with um challenges or things, in my head, I was like, I've got to do something else to feel better, yeah. even though I didn't know if I was ever going to feel better because of the pain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was a little different than distinctively the way my husband was, which was, I just want to go away and disappear. Like mm -hmm. I was, I was, that was part of the difference mm -hmm. in terms of how we were dealing with our pain. I was like, I got to find something. I was reading books, ain't help. I was praying right then. It wasn't helping. I mean, I, the prayers were helping, but it it didn't feel like they were helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was where we might be a little bit different in how we were dealing with it. His dealing with it was just to kind of quietly just go inside and kind of mm -hmm. move, mm -hmm. just move slowly out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, no, I don't like how this feels. I need yeah. to find something. Yeah. So. And, and that's really powerful. And I love the way that you describe that because that is so true, you know, with the difference. Um, and so share, uh, you know, when you be all, you all began to move in this way of healing, because what I also hear is that you were intentional about trying to get relief. 
yes. whatever that relief was yes. in a healthy way. Because some people yes. try to get in a healthy way. way in an unhealthy way, but in a healthy way. But talk about when you all decided that you were going to do something um, to honor your daughter's life, her legacy, and her memory. And you came up with this way to do it. Share how that um, came to be. The short version, dear, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, well, first, I felt with her with her being gone, and, and I, I'm thankful for my other two children. I have two other children. So I have we have three children together. With Kayla being gone, I felt there was, of course, like a hole in my heart. And it was almost like I felt, well, God, whatever energy I had extended to be her mom mm -hmm. and to help her be the woman that she had become, mm -hmm. I was like, Lord, how can we do something similar but help somebody else with that same energy? Mm -hmm. And so given that, um, Epilepsy is not a real familiar illness to the public. And when I say that, everyone knows about breast cancer. Breast cancer is all around, which is great, right? Yeah. The exposure, the marketing, the promotion, the education. But epilepsy doesn't get as much exposure. Right. So having with, with her illness being epilepsy, um, I, you know, the Lord just dropped in my spirit that maybe we should, um, do something. Number one, start a scholarship, mm -hmm. which we did at our church, Greater Mount Calvary, Holy That's Church. That's how it was birthed, Dr. Mason. It was mm -hmm. birthed out of the scholarship of our church, which we still have to this day for our church members. And even those outside of the church are still able, able to give. And from that, my wife wanted based on what she just described to you, mm -hmm. said we need to do more. Mm -hmm. And that's how we came up with the, she came up with the idea of the Kayla Ross Prayer Memorial Foundation. We went through several names and we came up that to keep her legacy and, and her memory alive through this foundation by bringing awareness and education about the illness of epilepsy. Mm -hmm. because we don't we don't want anyone to have to experience what we experience yeah and i and i really like the fact that you all have a focus specifically on epilepsy in the african-american community yes you know bringing yes. that education and awareness so talk about some of the activities that you all have in the foundation that you do each year mm -hmm. sure so we started with um what we call uh k-day and K-Day is an annual event where it's kind of like a health fair um, type event where we try to focus on the things that Kayla liked to do. Um, so she liked Zumba. So we always have some Zumba. Oh, that was Dr. Mason. She was out there. Oh, yeah, doing yeah. It. We have the proof. Doing it. We got we it. Got the, we got it on video. <laughs> I love this. I love it. Absolutely. We, we mm. have it on video. So, um, and Kayla was musically um, inclined. So mm. we always try to have someone singing or playing a musical instrument. And then we also, she was also dibbling and dabbling in cooking. Mm -hmm. So we also try to have a component about cooking. Um, and then we try to also have um, educationally, we try to bring someone who can talk about epilepsy or um, epilepsy awareness. And then we always try to have a mental health counselor. Mm -hmm. So we try to cover the whole gamut of what was important for Kayla, but also what could be important for the community. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first, that was the first thing that we do. And we do that in May around her birthday. Mm -hmm. And it's such, it's, it's such a lot of fun um, when you all do K-Day and, you know, I know that you all are always looking for sponsors. Yes. Uh, and so um, give the website address so that people sure. can check out the great work that you all are doing. Absolutely. We appreciate that. So it is www.kayla, 
K-A-Y-L-A, Ross, R-O-S-S, Perry, P-E-R-R-Y, memorialfoundation.org. So her name, dot org. Yep, no spacing. No spacing, Kayla Ross. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and we'll have that um, posted on our platforms as well. And you all have also given scholarships to young people. Talk a little bit about the scholarship and, you know, the criteria for for the Kayla Ross Perry uh, scholarship. Sure. So um, we're definitely very excited about that. And uh, because it's, we know that college is expensive, no matter what type of college you go to, it's expensive. And um, we also, you having spoken to my husband about mentoring, we always are excited about helping young people. Mm -hmm. So um, we've given out, um, we've been operational since 2019. 19. And so we've been able to give out two scholarships. One last year, we gave the first one out to a young lady. Her name is Kristen Carpenter. Mm-hmm. And she actually um, was graced also with epilepsy. Mm-hmm. But guess what, Nicole? She is in school. This is her second year at Stevenson University. Mm -hmm. And she is studying to be a medical technologist. And so here she is living example Mm -hmm. of someone who has been graced Mm -hmm. with epilepsy, Mm -hmm. but also God has given her the ability to continue to move forward and be successful. So Mm -hmm. we are very, very proud of our first recipient and her grade point average was something like above a 3.5. I can't even remember, but know that her and her mom are doing great things and they know that we're here to support her. Yeah. The second young lady happens to be a young lady who we're excited about um, is Miss LaShawn Johnson. Mm -hmm. And she um, recently, a recent graduate um, in 20, this is 2021. Yeah. And she is now at the University of District of Columbia studying fashion merchandising. Oh. And, and so part of the criteria always evolves around what Kayla liked or what mm-hmm. Kayla was interested in. Mm-hmm. So the criteria is um, creative arts. The person has to be pursuing creative arts or the um, recipient has to be graced with epilepsy. Mm-hmm. Um, we have no, um, it, they can have it, um, a 2.0 GPA. We are not looking for those students who um, are concerned about whether they have a 4.0. Mm-hmm. We want to encourage children to go to and young adults to hang in there and go to school. Yeah. So. That's so awesome. And, you know, I just want to remark that when you talk about her and talk about what she liked to do and helping other people to do it, your energy changed. Your energy is like, (laughs) yeah. And to me personally, that's how we turn our pain into purpose by serving Mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you all are even changing the narrative of how you explain somebody having epilepsy to be graced yes. with yes. epilepsy. Grace. I appreciate that. I yes. love yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause I think it's helpful um, in whatever ch- challenges we may have to try to turn it around um, mm-hmm. because it also can be a benefit to you because I'll just share one thing with you. I had asthma and guess what, Nicole, that kept me out of some places because I had asthma. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> kept you out of some places and kept you out of some activities that exactly. you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Exactly, that maybe I didn't even need to be there. And, yeah. and we're also here to encourage those individuals with epilepsy because a lot of times, uh, Dr. Mason, they have shame. Yes, because they have seizures and people think that they, something is wrong with them. We had to deal with our own, own daughter, daughter. self-esteem mm-hmm. uh, with that. And even the young lady Christian that we just spoke about uh, in terms of, of, of moving forward with your life and surrounding yourself is critical 
for them to surround them, surround them, surround themselves with good people. Yeah. Because you can have a seizure right. uh, in college. You can have a seizure at a party. You can have mm -hmm. a seizure on the train station, hanging out with your friends. So you want the right people around those individuals. And we want those individuals who are listening today mm -hmm. uh, to your show or will hear it uh, to know that the Kayla Ross Perry Memorial Foundation is here for you. Mm -hmm. You're not alone with your epilepsy. Please reach out to us so that we can be a resource for you and your family. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome and amazing. Uh, and so uh, also one thing I wanted to ask you, Minister Edena, you know, because I've read some of your poetry, it's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and how has that helped you in your healing process? Nicole, I can't express how much it has helped me um, because it started honestly from a friend of our, a friend of our family saying, hey, do you want to put something in my book about, you know, your daughter? And I was like, mm, I'm not too sure about that. Right. But as I began to write mm. and the pain came out on the paper, mm. I began to feel better. Yep. And as I, it, and I even saw um, I want to call you elder, but it's doctor. Um, I even saw how my poetry evolved where it was real raw in the beginning, like the first year that she passed. And then I saw how God was working with me, where at some point I was saying, I'm thankful for the life that she had. But in the beginning, I was angry for what I had lost. Yeah. And so that is how it has helped me. And I'm not claiming to be, you know, um, who is it, Gwendolyn Brooks. Mm -hmm. I'm not claiming mm -hmm. to be the young lady who spoke uh -huh. at uh -huh. Biden's, but I, I am sharing my inner thoughts with others who are willing to, to, to read it and to be honest about where I am. Yeah. And to show that you too, if you are grieving, this is a tool that can help you move along in your process. And whether you choose to let it be private or public is up to you. But that I know, I mean, out of everything that I've dealt with, besides reading books and praying, is the poetry has been like salve on a wound. That's how good it's been to me. That's awesome and amazing. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's the way I feel about my own writing. I always tell people it's therapy for me. I just happen to yes. let people in on it. In on it. Right. <laughs> and, and that's how it goes. Right. Uh, and so I also want to just let people know that you all are available to come to speak to their groups. Uh, and so I want to end with you, uh, Minister Bernard, uh, and just so that you can give a word to couples that may be listening and also share with them you all's website address where they can contact you all personally. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's www.bernardandedana, the no spacing, perry.com. It's mm -hmm. www.bernardandedana, perry.com. Go to our website. Um, we would love to come and speak to you. We would love to come join your organization or even couples nights or whatever you want to call it, or to be a resource uh, for your for your healing, for the for the beginning of healing or for the continued healing process uh, within your uh, within your organization. Yeah. Very good. And I am Dr. Nicole Mason, the Nicole Mason Show. This has been another powerful episode. Uh, the men are taking over this week. And I want to thank uh, Minister Bernard and his wife, Minister Edana, for coming and sharing very transparently and very vulnerably uh, their grieving process. Uh, you can follow me across social media at Nicole S. Mason ESQ and my website, Nicole S. Mason.com. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode and be sure to tune in for the next episode of 
The Nicole Mason Show.